So shall I start? Okay. Ready for space? Uh, hello, my name is Manolis. I'm from uh, Libre Space Foundation, a non-profit uh, company from Greece. And uh, we are going to present you SATNOX, it, a ground station based on SDR for receiving satellite uh, signals, especially low Earth orbit. Uh, this is our ground station. Uh, so SATNOX uh, consists from several components, from the rotator, which is, tries to, to adjust to the trajectory of the, of the satellite, the SDR hardware and uh, software, and then a client that is responsible to upload uh, to the cloud uh, the received uh, signals and uh, provide more information to the to users. So SATNOX is completely open source, uh, both uh, software and hardware, it's completely open. It costs about uh, 300 to 500, uh, depending on the SDR hardware uh, dollars, and uh, can, uh, can be deployed to our network, uh, to our cloud uh, infrastructure uh, freely. So, uh, what's the problem with low Earth, or low Earth orbit uh, satellites? Uh, because uh, the, because uh, their trajectory uh, is, uh, is low, uh, from uh, some uh, specific uh, location of, uh, on the Earth, a specific, uh, uh, a specific satellite can be observed only for a few minutes. Uh, so the idea is to deploy many ground stations in order to increase this uh, observation time. In SATNOX, uh, when a ground station receives data, then are uploaded uh, after some processing to, the, to our cloud infrastructure. And we have uh, a web uh, support to manually uh, schedule a, uh, a satellite observation on the other side of the Earth, when, uh, where a ground station has, for example, a line of sight with uh, this satellite. <coughs> this, is our pro uh, this is our rotator. You can see it here. It's, uh, most of it is 3D printed, impressive, and uh, most of the parts can be found very easily in uh, the market. Uh, see, uh, the, uh, here you can see the manufacturing process. The guys uh, from the hardware uh, department have done an amazing job to, to get it uh, in a very compact form. And uh, here you can see it uh, with uh, two uh, antennas in the shiny uh, sky of Greece. Uh, then two antennas uh, operate in uh, VHF and UHF band, uh, where the, most of the satellites of low Earth orbits uh, are operating. We target mainly CubeSats, so that's why the frequency bands. And uh, in order to demodulate the, the signals, we have a GNU radio module, the GR SATNOX, it's uh, available on GitHub, so everyone uh, can uh, get it or contribute to it. Uh, we support uh, multiple SDR hardware, uh, UHD, uh, RTL SDR, AirSpy, HackRF, through the GR Osmocom module. And uh, this module is responsible for filtering uh, the, the received signal, do, doing some uh, decimation to get it in, low, in lower sampling rates and uh, demodulating if uh, enough available uh, if enough information are uh, information are available for the specific satellite the, the signals sorry uh, the gr satnox module uh, out of the module can operate standalone so everyone can uh, use it without our satnox infrastructure uh, especially for uh, experimentation or uh, satellite development uh, or uh, deb just debugging and uh, Libre Space uh, Foundation, uh, before uh, a couple of a year ago, I think, uh, started the, the, manuf the manufacturing of the Ubsat uh, satellite. The Ubsat satellite, uh, you can see, you can see it here. This is uh, our uh, engineer model. It's the first uh, open end hardware uh, sat CubeSat. And uh, our flight model will be flying in space in about uh, 40 days, I think, with an Atlas uh, V uh, rocket of, from Cape Canaveral. 
Uh, our software runs on Linux, and we have a full uh, support for uh, Raspberry Pi 3. So this is SubSat, the flight model. Uh, it's now on Cape Canaveral, and we are waiting for it uh, to get uh, its signals. And uh, it's quite impressive how how the SDR and uh, GNU radio uh, uh, speed uh, speeded up the process of uh, development and uh, testing this uh, this satellite. Uh, we managed in a couple of uh, three months, if I'm uh, if I'm uh, uh, if I recall well to assemble it and uh, test all the RF components that are necessary to go in space and uh, receive the signals. So I encourage uh, people that are going to uh, get involved with CubeSats to use SDRs, are extremely powerful tools for the bugging experimentation. And uh, this monstrosity is uh, the flow graph that uh, we use to get uh, the, the signal from a uh, CubeSat satellite. Uh, as you can see, it's a transceiver. Actually, we have a full command and control interface. Uh, we can send signals to the to the satellite and receive uh, back. The satellite has uh, a quite variety of uh, commands that supports and uh, to get telemetry or uh, its uh, health status reports and so on. So, this is the Asatnox. Uh, it has, uh, as you can see, uh, many blocks that are used mainly for uh, debugging, but uh, we have also some uh, decoders and uh, demodulators available. And uh, one, of, for example, one is the uh, MOS decoder. Okay, main of the CubeSats operating more sing with uh, more signals. It's quite strange, but uh, it's true. Uh, <laughs> uh, MOS is uh, still uh, active out there. And um, we hope uh, to to increase the number of blocks and uh, provide some more, some more debugging uh, tools. For example, um, a low earth, uh, a low earth orbit uh, channelizer, <laughs> which is quite useful for debugging and experimentation and so on. So, uh, one of the major things uh, uh, that uh, systems that receive uh, signals from low earth orbit sat so satellites is the Doppler effect. Uh, which can be quite large in, uh, in the order of kilohertz. Uh, so GR Satnox uh, module uh, tries to compensate the Doppler effect uh, by calculating the trajectory of, uh, of the satellite and knowing its speed. Knowing, uh, if I know the speed of the, uh, of the satellite, I can uh, calculate the frequency offset and correct it. So we have two different types of correction blocks. The one is the coarse one, which uh, uh, performs around 10 uh, corrections per second and uh, by just uh, computing the trajectory. And uh, the other one, which uh, performs more than uh, 1,000 uh, corrections per second by both uh, calculating the tra trajectory of uh, the satellite and uh, by applying some cure fitting techniques. Of course, uh, the fine uh, Doppler, effect uh, Doppler effect compensator cannot run on Raspberry, but it's okay in normal uh, CPU like laptops and so. Uh, we have a very strong web integration. The GNU Radio module uploads uh, many uh, data on the web that uh, then uh, the user can uh, see it and uh, easily identify the, how the observation was if uh, the data received correctly if uh, some problem with uh, its RF equipment uh, exists or so on. Uh, so the first thing that we upload on the web, it's uh, an audible representation in an OG format uh, of the signal. So many of uh, the transmissions uh, from CubeSat satellites uh, can be demodulated in uh, audible frequencies. Uh, the next one is a waterfall image, which is a very convenient way to see quickly if uh, something wrong went uh, with the observation. If, uh, if for, for example, the trajectory and telemetry information are wrong, you will see a Doppler shift. If, are correct, if uh, they are correct, the Doppler shift will be non-visible. And uh, if you have uh, information about uh, the frame structure of the received signal, we demodulate the signal, we generate a bit stream, and we upload it to 
This is very useful for uh, missions that uh, want to get the telemetry data from uh, their satellites, for example. Now, here you can see the, the waterfall image. As you can see, our, uh, uh, our Doppler correction algorithm performs pretty well. This is a CW Morse uh, code uh, signal. And uh, except from this, uh, we provide the information where the, uh, when the, uh, when the uh, observation started and when it finished. Uh, the frequency of uh, the transponder, uh, the name of uh, the of the satellite, and uh, here it's a here is a good point to mention that uh, officially now we are Satnox is the larger largest uh, database with uh, telemetry data and uh, transponder data of uh, CubeSat satellites. Okay. So let's switch to the actual web interface. Uh, here is all uh, the development uh, right now nodes that are uh, deployed on Earth. Uh, as you can see, I can, oh, sorry. Uh, as you can see, the I can uh, see the observations that are available and uh, have been performed by uh, deployed ground stations right now. Uh, in every uh, for every observation, we have the name of the satellite and, uh, uh, the, for example, the transponder, the transponder frequency and uh, which uh, encoding uh, does it use. And uh, if I select a specific one observation, uh, for example, I can see the uploaded uh, data and uh, the demodulated uh, stream. So this, for example, is a, is a satellite that uh, transports FM, uh, transports FM uh, uh, transmissions uh, like a repeater. So here I think that we can be able to... to hear amateur uh, operators that uh, try to communicate through the satellite with other some some amateur uh, operators in the other side of the earth and uh, if you can uh, hear there's no doppler shift so this effect has been compensated pretty well so uh, another very interesting uh, feature that uh, we have incorporated is the automatic signal detection. Uh, many of the cubes that are uh, up uh, there in space uh, do not operate all the uh, during all the all the day. B many of them uh, during night they close their transponders because they consume energy, or when the energy levels are in critical uh, in critical state, they close uh, their subsystems. So, if, uh, or uh, for example, uh, we, we may have uh, wrong uh, trajectory or outdated uh, information, so no signal uh, have been received. In such case, we have uh, an automated uh, system that tags the observation properly. Uh, for example, the green one, uh, it indicates that uh, this observation has a strong signal. Uh, with uh, the orange one, we are not very. The algorithm is not so so sure, and uh, with the red, we, uh, the algorithm is, uh, indicates that there is no signal to this observation. So we, with this way, uh, we can uh, truss out uh, the observation that uh, uh, contain no data. So uh, that's all for now. But uh, we are uh, now on, um, we have some plans to uh, to expand our uh, ecosystem. One of uh, our ideas is to use MIMO in order to get uh, rid of uh, mechanical uh, equipment and uh, by using an, an, air, uh, an array of uh, multiple antennas to <coughs> perform. Uh, beam forming and uh, target uh, uh, to a specific satellite without uh, with uh, with no moving parts. 
George uh, below uh, up there <laughs> has done uh, some remarkable uh, remarkable work on this. Uh, so if uh, he successfully receives his master thesis, <laughs> this will be available too on the, on the GitHub. Uh, and of course, we want to add more satellites. Uh, the problem with CubeSat is uh, that, that there is no standard way to perform framing. So every team uh, performs uh, each framing method or uh, use some custom uh, framing formats. So if uh, you are operator or uh, of a CubeSat or you somehow know information about framing uh, of other of a CubeSat uh, missions, please uh, come and uh, uh, contribute to our project. So that's for me. Uh, we have a booth uh, out there, so if you want to come and uh, see the satellite uh, operating uh, in real time, uh, you can uh, come into it. We are glad to provide more information. And we have time for questions. Yeah. How are you associating metadata with your data sets? Great <laughs> <laughs> question. Uh, <laughs> For now, we phrase the problem differently. Yeah. Do you have a good solution to that problem right now? No. Okay. No. It, to me. <laughs> it's it's a great problem. It's a great problem. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, if uh, we somehow uh, provide uh, a way to for people to. Uh, do not uh, not care about the reception of uh, their signal. Let uh, say them, okay, follow this framing uh, framing standard, or just inform us about your framing uh, format, uh -huh. in order to be able to retrieve uh, uh, your signal. Yeah. For us, it's very trivial to to build a GNU radio block or a, a, flow, a GNU radio flow graph to get uh, to grab the data. The problem right now it's the information. So. Uh, this was uh, our first, uh, let's say, goal with the uh, with uh, We we want to be all the information about this satellite to be open to the public and uh, see um, to show to the community if uh, there is information about it. You can uh, get uh, you can uh, attract more people to it. Uh, so. I think that uh, right now the, the problem is uh, the, there's no standardization or l not, no, not standardization, uh, no access to information. If uh, I do not have the framing, support, the framing format, it's quite difficult to do it uh, or to uh, try to exploit uh, by doing some uh, crazy stuff and uh, reverse engineering, for example, and uh, okay. so on. Yeah, let's chat more later. Yeah. Do you have plans to support the distributed sending of telecommands? Uh, right now, no. You, but it's uh, in our plans. Uh, right now, you select manually uh, a ground station that you, that uh, will have a, a line of sight with a satellite um, in a couple of uh, half an hour ago uh, before. And uh, the system places this scheduling, uh, this uh, scheduling observa schedule observation uh, on that uh, specific ground station, and it starts automatically. Okay. Uh, right now we have uh, just uh, a list of you select uh, the satellite that you want to observe, and uh, the system provides you a list with the ground stations uh, that uh, will have a line of sight uh, in the near future. Yeah, from uh, for this uh, specific satellite, we have a sat uh, we uh, we have a public link. Can you please remember to repeat the question? Ah, sorry. Um, if uh, we have a, a, an uplink uh, yeah, command and control uh, service, yeah, for this uh, particular uh, uh, satellite, 
we have a, a full set of uh, command and control interface that uh, supports uh, multiple commands. For example, I mean using the, the platform. So the, your Sorry? Using your platform, can you remote operate the satellite using a different ground station? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I select a ground station, uh, for example, in the USA that has a line of sight with uh, my uh, with a UPSAT satellite, and then I can uh, issue commands there and get the result. But uh, this is, for now, it is not uh, performed automatically. You have to select the specific uh, uh, ground station from the available list. Uh, we can cover uh, the frequencies that are covered are uh, only limited by the hard the SDR hardware that you use. Okay, so for example, the VHF and the UHF bands are uh, easily covered with uh, RTL SDR or uh, uh, SPI, and uh, of course USRP. Okay. Are you planning to cover like yeah. Uh, is the next uh, goal is to. To start building the new, the, ne the next satellite, LibreSat satellite, and uh, we want to get high in the frequency. <coughs> so uh, come and see us in uh, the booth, and uh, we'll provide you some more info if you would like. <coughs>